But then because the yes. idea was so powerful, we managed to succeed and it took us several years. But uh, in 2014, we made this great uh, Congress of Families inside Kremlin. So the whole Kremlin was uh, booked for us. We had a laser show on the temples, on the churches, and we had like a big private party for us, for pro-family leaders. And we had it in the Palace uh, of Congresses where the Communist Party used to gather during the Soviet Union time. So there was a completely mind-changing thing for our American friends and uh, uh, European friends, but it happened. So how did we achieve it? First of all, so <clears throat> we had to identify who are the key stakeholders and uh, um, first of all we needed to um, uh, launch uh, a long-term PR campaign and uh, identify opinion leaders and trendsetters and uh, journalists and mass media were receiving. So that's him describing yeah. exactly how they managed to convince a bunch of right-wing right. Christian Americans, I guess, in a little party on the Kremlin because, hey, who, everyone can book the Kremlin, right? I mean, that's easy to go and book the right. Kremlin for a party. Obviously not. Right. Obviously, it's something that's a state-funded event that Putin would have wanted to happen or he wouldn't have given up the venue. You know, uh, lasers on, a, on a rooftops there on the churches and they were able to get a whole bunch of Americans to buy into this idea that homeschooling is necessary. That's because homeschooling might be necessary in Russia, where schooling is apparently quite terrible. And that's why Mr. Komov homeschools his five kids. You know, maybe there's a lot to do in American education, but, you know, the education is obviously much better here than it is in Russia. Maybe there isn't as much need for homeschooling here. But for Mr. Komov, this became a mission. Maybe he was sent on this mission by his boss, but it became a personal mission to bring homeschooling as an issue to America. He did it and explained exactly those three three point step of finding a finding a mission, finding a statement, and going ahead and doing it. So it tells you a lot about who this guy is, and it tells you a lot about how this homeschooling thing has emerged. And now it's going to become a battlefield in every school. Yes, that's right. And we've already seen how just here in California, seven people left school boards because they were just working 80 hour weeks and under siege and they were getting doxxed and you know so this is a really what do you nasty... mean i didn't know about that tell me more about that what do you mean so many people left uh, some with? some of the folks that are a part of this homeschooling movement and this mm -hmm. anti-vax movement these narrative clusters that you've been identifying on the show they go out to these school board meetings and they rant and they rant about you know everything from the nuremberg code which we've talked about and the people who actually are on these boards here in California, seven of them that I've identified have resigned because they can't take the stress that is brought on. Essentially, ops are being run on people at school boards. And yep. so people who just got into it because maybe they cared about the education in their community are leaving. And as you said at the beginning of the show, that allows a vacancy for what? For some of these bad actors to come in. So they're bullying the existing people on homeschool boards, the existing educators that care yeah. about your kids' education, that they're doing the right work for your kids, and they are bullying them out of their jobs. And then they're running in those elections yes, and they're right. getting those jobs. And when they get them, they're gonna try and make a mess of the education system. This is the GOP policy for success in next year's election. That's what we're talking about. This is the, the this is how far they have come and the, the big bottom that we're, they, they seem to have, there is no bottom for them. They'll just go as low as they can. In the meantime, I'll run through some of these articles you've got here. These run from Russian Insider are the wow. magazines, are the, are the articles that were published in Charles Bowsman's newspaper. I mean, this is his newspaper that he published these articles supporting Alexei Komov's homeschooling initiative. So this is how they seeded the argument, how they seeded this idea of homeschooling into the American narrative. They created their own publications, not Think Progress, but Russia Insider and on the two sides there. And they made a point of pushing this into the American narrative using these publications that were obviously paid for by espionage money. I mean, there's no other money that could afford these kind of publications. It was obviously paid for by either the SVR or the GRU would be my guess. The SVR is probably more likely. But boy, I mean, we are looking at an operation which began probably well before 2018. Yes, um, probably started in 2014 right. with the uh, World Council of Federation. In 2018, there was a homeschooling um, organization launched. And since then, they have been seeding this idea that homeschooling is this number one phenomenon, this huge thing that's happening in right. America. It's not. But it's now Dr. Simone Gold's new thing, new strategy. So having convinced Stumping a lot of people points. not to get vaccinated, which is literally causing people's death, she's now going to be telling people to get their kids out of school 
and damage their education. I mean, it's beyond cynical. I mean, I don't know why this isn't being communicated into Republican circles, but it sure would be interesting, you know, if this message got out, because it's clearly what they're doing currently in the battlefield um, for the next elections. That's right. And one of those articles that you pointed out, um, and one of the articles I researched today showed that there's something called the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, which goes back 36 years between Russia and America. And apparently Americans really latched onto that. And that might be the biggest homeschool activist organization right now in the country. And again, Zev, you hit the nail on the head earlier when you said it all ties into the, the core of it is this anti-gay rhetoric. One thing I was going to say is one of the first comments I grabbed was we were chastised by our audience. They said, stop calling the GOP anything other than a mob. And I think it's that true. there is truth in that, right? You I know? mean, they're acting like a mob. I mean, this is not a political party that has policy anymore. It's not a political party that cares about its constituents anymore. It cares about power for all the wrong reasons. It cares about power for grift. It cares about power so they can get ahead. It cares about power for its foreign uh, funders. I mean, their objection the other day to the $3.5 trillion had everything to do with Israel. I mean, I care about Israel's security. But if the Democrats want that out because they're upset about something with Israel, why are the Republicans stopping a $3.5 trillion deal because of that one issue? It's not really a hill to die on, is it? And of course, it'll get back in there anyhow, because we know it'll get back in there. But it just tells you so much about where the grift is going, how much money is being poured into the GOP to basically corrupt this entire organization. And now it seems to me that all their policy, this stop the steal, the anti-vax thing, we've proven that anti-vax had ties to Russia. We've proven on this show that Stop the Steel has tracks to Russia. And now we're saying that homeschooling tracks to Russia. There's a pattern. It's clearly obvious mm -hmm. that Russia is running, at least advising, influencing foreign policy and policy in uh, the GOP. And that's really what we're dealing with here, is a party that's been wholesale taken over by a mob, by a Russian-influenced mob. So you're right, everyone. We should be calling it the mob. Absolutely. The MOB. Doesn't sound. Yes. Bad. The MOB. Yeah, I like it. There's also people calling yes. it GQP, which is appropriate too. I am hoping that Rachel still joins us. In the meantime, I can tell you a little bit about uh, Mr. Milofeyev is an interesting he conversation. Sure is. So he is a uh, well-known oligarch. Uh, most people in the world of Trump Russia, most people who understand that this period of, of Trump Russia know that Konstantin Milofeyev is one of the biggest proponents of the Russian Orthodox Church. And the Russian Orthodox Church might seem like it's just its own entity. It isn't really. It's now partnered with Putin as a way to push this white Christian right, you know, thing that's going on around the world. And Mr. Milofeyev is considered a very dangerous man. He's also considered one of the chief architects of the attack on Ukraine, of the attack on Crimea. And he's the reason that a lot of this has come to America. A lot of this has been funded by Milofeyev. When you look at what Charles yeah. Bowsman was doing, that money was going through Komov to Milofeyev. So when you see those Russian insider articles promoting homeschooling. It's Konstantin Milofeyev's money that's doing this. He's also sponsored the World Council of Federation, the family, sorry, the, the party that they were just talking about in the Kremlin. He has annual meetings in, in 2019. That meeting was held in Verona, a very expensive place to be going if you're holding meetings. And he's also interestingly aligned with two other people that are interesting. Alexander Dugan, we've discussed in the show many times before. He's sort of the architect, the uh, Putin's Rasputin, who talks a lot about um, how the world is going to change through this uh, white nationalism and the decline of America. It's unclear whether his philosophy is any grounding in, in reality. It doesn't look like it does. But there's also this fellow named Jack Hannock. Mm -hmm. And Jack Hannock runs Tsargard TV or something like that, which mm -hmm. is Konstantin Milofeyev's Fox News for Russia. It's a mm -hmm. very right-wing, white nationalist, R Russian Orthodox Church mouthpiece of a news organization. And Konstantin Milofiev runs that. No, he owns That's that. That's right. And Jack Hannock runs it. Well, and tell us who Jack Hannock is. 
Oh, this is so great. That's the circle that's off to the side, you know. Hannock was the director for Sean Hannity. He was one of the originators of Fox News in America. Then he went over to create basically the equivalent of Fox News in Russia. This is all tied in with the church. He did that for Malafiev. Malafiev, as you probably know, Zev is a monarchist. That's kind of one of his yep. stumping points. It's not really a, dem- and a so Democrat. You ha- and also, our viewers probably um, may or may not know this, but he's sanctioned in all the Western countries for exactly what you said, sanctioned by Canada, you know, UK, uh, America, for his role in apparently allegedly financing some of those little green men that you see in the Ukraine and elsewhere. Hannock's fascinating because, you know, we're always looking for these intersections and we listen to the Hannity's and we listen to, I don't, but... The, the Tucker Carlson's and what they're really spouting often, uh, and Laura Ingram, uh, they're often spouting essentially Kremlin propaganda. And here's a guy who worked at Fox, who now works for an oligarch, creating the Fox News version in Russia mm. when he came straight out of Fox News. Absolutely. So again, you know, have have a shot because you know. Here's Russia's. Yeah, here's Russia in the works again. Jack Hannock was Sean Hannity's producer. He was a really close guy to to Sean. We know that Sean Hannity has uh, you know issues with being connected to Russia. Certainly being connected to Donald Trump in many ways because he used to uh, basically advise him on a nightly basis. Uh, you know, we don't know if he's still in contact with Jack Hannock, but we know that Zargar TV has a lot of the same kind of talking points that you'll find on Fox News. And we don't know if Jack Hannock still talks to any of these people. Maybe he doesn't. But firstly, why is an American in Moscow starting a network for monarchists and the Russian Orthodox Church? It's a little bit weird. It doesn't make a ton of sense, especially when you look at the circle of people around Konstantin Malofiev. I mean, Charles Balsman, suspected spy, Alexa Komov, I'm sure he'll say he's a consultant, but you know, you walk like a spy, you act like a spy, you might be a spy. And uh, Alexander Dugan is the architect of all of this, and they all surround Konstantin Malofiev. So, you know, stop the steal, anti-vaxxing, homeschooling, Fox News, you've got it all in the same place, the insurrection, and they all somehow tie in to Konstantin Malofiev. Makes you wonder a, a lot about, you know, who really is running the strategy and the editorial thinking at Fox News, because it doesn't seem to be anyone with an interest in America. It seems to be something that, you know, is purely Russian Kremlin talking points. Yeah, um, it's, what are it's, people, what it's are, incredible. What are people saying online? Any other thoughts or comments from anybody? You know what? They were just, it's always funny because the viewers know the history of this so well. Clearly, yeah. they've been schooled by you and, and whatever oh, they, else they they're reading. Me. Are you but, me? I've learned everything from <laughs> I know, them. they're amazing. <laughs> you know, they just reminded us that, you know, Hannity was uh, Michael Cohen's number two client. You know, it's that's like, true. That's true. It's and such a great point. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions or comments that they want to throw in here from, the, from our chat groups? Is there anybody? Marie here? Cass loves your Venn diagram. She thinks it's awesome. And um, another one of our viewers from Texas said that the homeschooling, um, you know, push has been going on in Texas for two decades. And 20 years ago, they actually legalized it. Marie Cast is also saying that narrative needs to homeschool people. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, idea. somebody else said, so it's always been Russia. I mean, you don't. It's just Russia. There's, there's no such thing as coincidence when it comes to this stuff. And clearly, when we have what is currently an influence war, and a lot of these folks are influential in this war, and you have Alexander Dugan, who is Steve Bannon's favorite philosopher. You know, it's just every, you know, one de- uh, degree of separation from Cambridge Analytica and everything else. Yeah. I mean, ask yourself, ask yourself what it would look like if we didn't have this polarization in America right now. Ask yourself what it would look like without Donald Trump having been president in America. Ask yourself what it would look like if we didn't have an insurrection, if we didn't have QAnon, if we didn't have Stop the Steal, if we didn't have the anti vax drive, if we didn't have any of those things. Where would America be right now? We would be in a pretty happy place. Everything that has been 
negative that has come into America over the last few years has been connected to Russia. And there's no escaping that. That's just the reality of it. And yes, now we find out that there are some supposed white nationalists and neo-Nazis who were first uh, protesting there in Charlottesville. They were getting paid by some wealthy donors somewhere. So this is not some like grassroots thing that's coming out of America where suddenly, you know, white people are trying to express themselves because they feel downtrodden. It's coming because they've been amped up and influenced by these Russian propaganda efforts and operatives like Charles Bowsman, who has a barn where he can host the neo-Nazis so they can launch their party. This is how it all started. And there are hundreds, if not thousands of operatives in America, some of them in high paying jobs, some of them work at Fox News, some of them work elsewhere, but they are constantly polarizing America, coming up with strategies to tear America apart. And it doesn't need to be this way. The Russians are using our own freedom, our own capacity to allow people in and our own ability to have you know, free speech, to have access to our airwaves and, and there being a you know, fairly open society where people are accepting of everybody. This is why it's happening is because the freedom in this country is being manipulated and used by our Russian adversaries. And I think those pre- freedoms need to be protected at all costs. On the other hand, I'm okay with a little bit of limitation. Like I'm okay with a little bit of, you know, foreign governments shouldn't come in here and lie to us about things that could kill our people. I'm okay with that being limited. I, you know, that's okay. You can limit that. I think that's fair game. They have no reason to be here. They have no standing to be here and they're killing people. So perhaps, you know, we can cut off their broadcast networks from our airwaves or, you know, not allow cults like the Moonies to have a network because why does a cult like the Moonies have to run a news network in America or a newspaper in America? These things, you know, they don't add up and they're very, very dangerous because we're not any better off than we were at the end of the Trump administration. We're basically in the same, even worse, I'd say. Some, I feel like the tension and the embitterment and the quagmire that we're in is no different, but probably worse than it was when Trump was president. Because it doesn't look to me like the GOP has found enlightenment or are changing in any way. They're sticking to their guns. And we're heading into even more polarization into next year. Half the country doesn't even believe the president of the, of the country is, is really the president. I mean, it's just, it's, the big lie has become the big lies and it's out of control. It's just an endless, endless array of these things. You know, a narrative, I've always thought the number one thing we have to do is to get ahead of these big lies get ahead of the misinformation and the disinformation. And what did you call it today? Malinformation? There's a whole bunch yes, of new Yes, that's things. our new word. That's our new word for today, kids. Malinformation. Mal- which means? When the truth is, when the truth, malinformation means when the truth is uh, weaponized and disseminated in a way to actually target people. So it can be compromise is one example of malinformation, but it can be when something happened let's say to you personally, let's say you're a journalist and they got some intel on you from a few years ago, they can then seed that or publicly put that out um, on blast and really hurt people and try to silence people. And they do that kind of stuff. Of course, we've always said here that there's always a kernel of truth in every, every little bit of disinformation as well. So this is their very practice. This is the world they come from. And our job at Narrative has always been to see if we can get ahead of this. So tonight's show is really about helping people understand that this is what's coming. So when the school board elections are up and there's lots of them happening, you need to make sure that the right people are on those school boards. It's not one of those things that you can ignore or just let run by you or whatever. No matter where you are, figure out who's running for those school boards, figure out who the right candidates are, and make sure that you're not letting these partisan GOP candidates onto those boards because they will create havoc in those boards. And they have no reason to be there. They're political people interfering in your kids' education. So find out about the school board elections if you can and you want to stand in the school board elections if you need to. Make sure that your school board members are protected because there is a lot of you know, bullying going on. I don't mean protected, like physically protected, but protected at least um, in terms of being supported publicly and openly by the community. And then make sure the right people are being 
elected onto that board. This is what democracy is about at the end of the day. They've gone to the weakest spot in, in American democracy, the school boards where people don't often pay a lot of attention and they are targeting that and they're targeting the people in our society who do not have, um, you know, who do not have the most, any power. They're kids, they're kids. And we're targeting kids, they're targeting kids. It's just wrong. You know, there's no, there's no two ways about it. I urge everyone, if you can, get involved in those school board elections to make sure that right people are getting um, elected into the school boards and get ready for one hell of a year because there are going to be issues after issues after issues that come from schools that suddenly seem like they should dominate all our lives. Yeah. But they're just amplifications by propaganda outfits and Fox and whatever. They're going to try to amplify all these issues. You know, suddenly your school lunch is going to become an issue that's national or or whatever you know and it's all just political it's all designed to weaken america and try to get the gop back in power so you know putin could have his way in america for another couple of years i think that's all we got for tonight i think that was amazing i'm sorry rachel didn't show up but i we will make sure that rachel <laughs> bitikov comes on the show if only so i can say her name because it's the most amazing name ever it's great bitikov i think you know i've used <laughs> that so many times because always people say i don't pronounce their names right so so, do we have anything else you want to drop in here, uh, Heidi? Or just oh like man, you, you just nailed it. We got a bunch of great shows coming up, and uh, on just that one note, we do need protections because uh, our democracy is being weaponized against us. Germany has laws against hate speech, and we should too. Absolutely, and just uh, laws against lies would be a good thing in our current setting. Uh, there's no show tomorrow, but Friday the after show is back. Uh, LB and Greg Oliar will be here. It'll be fun, as it always is on a Friday night. You're always uh, encouraged to join us at patreon.com forward slash narrative. It's one of the ways that we're able to make all this happen. There's a lot of research, a lot of production, uh, a lot of you know Heidi's time and, and other people's time that uh, help make narrative happen. And we really rely on um, our viewers and subscribers joining at patreon.com forward slash narrative. It makes a huge difference. It makes sure that we can continue to bring these kind of stories um, these kind of issues to you at home. And these really do matter heading into next year's election. There's also a store, um, my Shopify narrative, my Shopify.narrative.com, <laughs> I think, where you can buy all sorts of new goodies. And I, I just, uh, there's a few new things in there that, which people might like. There's a, there's a cap, there's a little stand for your phone so you can attach it to your phone and you can watch narrative. And um, there's a new tote bag which says life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness on it because that's what uh, America's meant to be about. So all those that's things right. are available to you and they all go to support uh, the journalism we do here at Narrative. Next week, we have more big shows coming. I can't even remember what's up, but I think Jennifer Taub will be here and also Steve Hassan. We're bringing back. Dr. Hassan back, yeah. yes. Great. So lots of great stuff happening next week. Plus, we continue our investigation into Charles Bowsman. You just won't believe what we found out about Charles Bowsman. The story is so much bigger and so much more interesting, and we'll be breaking more news on Russia's involvement in January 6th next week, on, uh, or at least in the coming weeks on Narrative, as soon as we just uh, finish vetting all the stuff. But, you know, it's, it's amazing, amazing detail. It'll blow your mind away how deeply Russia was involved in that attempted coup on January the 6th. So on that note, we thank you very much for being here tonight. And uh, thanks, Heidi. It's great to see you, as always. That was a we great see each other show, all the Dad. time. We do see each other all the time. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll have a good night, everybody. 